Well, for the uh, astute amongst you, you'll notice that we are not in the shop. Um, it's Tuesday and we are in New York. We just left LaGuardia and uh, we're in a rental vehicle. And when we're driving to Long Island to hook up with uh, Frank and pick up a bunch of submarines. And uh, that's gonna be our trip. We're gonna pick up a whole fleet of boats and uh, drive all the way back to Texas. So uh, we got up at Odark 30 this morning. It was like 3.30, right? Yeah, about 3.30. Um, got a ride to the airport, hopped on a commercial flight. Um, beautiful flight, it was awesome. And uh, picked up our rental car and we're gonna be to that area in about, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. so. Thanks for coming with us on this little journey. Hopefully you enjoy it and uh, let's get this road trip started. So here we are in uh, Medford and uh, we're close to our hotel. We can't check in yet. So we uh, decided to stop for lunch and uh, we're gonna do some pizza. At Le Margarita pizza this is like one of three restaurants in this whole area so time for some sustenance then we'll head back to the hotel check in rest up a bit go see frank so here we are in our hotel room in medford we're getting ready to head out and meet frank um Wanted to let you know what this itinerary actually looks like. So tonight we're gonna head over, meet up with Frank, and we're gonna grab this, and this, and we're gonna try and fit them in the van. Hopefully that works because we've got a lot of other subs to pick up as well. We're gonna uh, go out for dinner with a whole bunch of uh, bubble heads from the local area here to uh, Momo's 2, which uh, I believe is Frank's relatives, uh, daughter-in-law or son-in-law's restaurant uh, nearby here. Tomorrow, we are going to head out to Pennsylvania. Uh, we're going to pick up a big uh, Gato-class submarine as well as hopefully a couple of other ones. Drive uh, a little bit further in Pennsylvania and we're going to pick up a big U-boat as well as maybe a couple surface craft. We're going to see how that works. And then from there, we're gonna hightail at home, stopping in Tennessee before we head back to Houston. So it's gonna be an exciting trip and uh, I'm really excited to see Frank and all the local guys here. So I'm gonna hop in the van, head on over. So we're here in beautiful Medford, New York with Frank Salerno. On a beautiful day. Yeah, <laughs> the weather is, is, is uh, cooperating with You're us. A duck. <laughs> And, we're, and we've just been taking a look at the two boats that Frank has out on the porch. Now, the, the one that we're most interested in is the is the sea view on the left. Is it, what, eight and a half? Yeah. Eight and a half inches. 104 inches long. And this is what Frank put together for us. So, and he's going to need to decide if he's going to be inundated with people, because you're going to get inundated with people wanting you to build these for them now. You understand yeah. that, right? If I do, what I'm going to do is make the molds a little easier. Yeah. To work. Yeah. And I'll get more money for it because you know, I gave you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 for sure. So we got we got the the big sea view on the on the left there, and then we've got a big 48 scale Akula on the right. And both of these are sold before everybody gets too excited. <laughs> I already had somebody ask me about that one. And I just mentioned it in my newsletter. I didn't even that show a picture. <laughs> was it Ed? No, no. <laughs> it was someone else from Dive Tribe, though. So now our challenge is going to be getting them in the vehicle, and then once I guess we get that done, we're going to get a tour of Frank's shop. So this is this is Frank's Bat Cave. Yep. Or you you called it the Nelson Institute. Yeah, the Nelson Institute. Yeah. So are you are you an RC plane guy too? I used to be when I lived upstate, but it's so hard to fly down here. It's, you got to have insurance. They got to be 
they got to approve you. So I haven't touched those. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the infamous sea, sea view. So I, I saw this in person in Groton when you had it like right. just basically the fiberglass hull at that yeah, time. Yeah, there was think, stuff in it, it, but nothing was working. Yeah, yeah. Logan, you would like this. This is, <laughs> this is how I get to my insides. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. And there's twice as much on the bottom. That's what, what what's the term? Ten, 10 pounds of rocks in yeah. a five pound bag? See, I made this thinking that this was going to go in there. And I started <laughs> making the interior and everything that you can look in. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The only interior paper. Mm -hmm. It's three years I'm trying to get that done because of everything else I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> So it was Wednesday morning, and uh, we're getting ready to head out to Pennsylvania, pick up more boats. How'd you sleep last night? Pretty well. Yeah, the room was pretty nice. Got some breakfast this morning. It's, uh, what time is it? 10 after 7. So uh, we are going to be on our way here shortly. Um, I want to show you what we got in the car. So this is our preliminary packing that we've got going on. Big Akula. I also got gifted a brand new MSD sub driver from one of the no local New York crew down here. That was pretty awesome. Uh, and then of course the gigantic Sea View. Man, that thing is big. Holy cow. And then uh, another little bonus. What's back there, Logan? That is, I believe, I don't remember the size he said, but it's a Proteus. Yeah, uh, Teskey Proteus from Fantastic Voyage. Um, super rare. Um, that's going to be a fun project. So now I think that little one, we can probably, you can do that up as a display model. Which works out better. I'm sure I could have RC'd it, but it would have been at the sacrifice of a lot of detail to make it work. But now I can have a full display and a full functional model. Yeah, and that, that thing is huge. I think it's about 30 inches long. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have some presence. Um, well, let's uh, shut up the vehicle, put everything in the GPS, and hit the road. Well, we are an hour into our drive, still in New York, um, deep in rush hour. Now, we were warned not to leave until after 9 o'clock, um, but we figured we would leave anyway. And we did really well because we got to drive in the HOV lane for the most of the way on the, that Long Island Expressway. Um, but now we are stuck. Deep in rush hour traffic in New York in the morning. And the uh, GPS is saying we got like a red path for like forever. It's all good. We'll make it. Um, this is just the most frustrating part of the trip. I think after we pick up the last of the subs, it'll all be freeways most of the way home. So, such is the joys of long distance driving. Severe migraines. Oh. It's been that way. That's why that one time when I went down to Subfest on Sunday, I was driving through rainstorms to get there on that, and I looked so terrible. That's because I had severe migraines on that one. Yeah, that's And I should have, like, just drove down there and, and stayed at that hotel, and, you know, but again, I could barely, because I had to go down to Florida for my sister and stuff like that. Oh, I remember that, yeah. yeah. Well, whoever whoever it was that put this together did a really nice job. So we just left David's house a little while ago. We got about three hours to our next stop where we're picking up another submarine and maybe some more boats. Uh, the challenge is we've got a little bit in the back. There's a little bit back there. So there's a speed trap ahead. Speed trap. Um, we're gonna have to get creative once we get there, but we should be there around 4:30. 
Um, that was a pretty good haul from Days. Yeah. What uh, What was your your favorite boat that we picked up? Which one was it? It was the smaller one that we just. Oh, got. the Marlin. Oh, the Marlin. Yeah, the Marlin. Not the permit. Yeah, that that one looks really cool. Um, actually, I think that's the one I'm most excited about as well. <laughs> So it's a it's a thirty second parallel boat, but whoever built it, again, apparently it was a guy in Germany, um, did a really good job, kind of super detailing the hull, and then the cylinder is really pretty cool too. Yeah, it's mostly built as well. So yeah, hopefully that'd be a quick flip for us. Hopefully, we don't always say that, but we say that about all of our projects that turn into two week long things. Yeah. Oh, the big type seven. Yeah, the big type seven. Yeah, that one's a little rough around the edges, but um, we'll either offer it kind of as is for somebody who wants to put the elbow grease into it, or we'll bring it to Subfest. Yeah. So we got we potentially have that one for a Subfest donation, and then we've also got the Zero Bubble uh, Delta Four for a Subfest donation, as well as a couple of radios. Yeah, some new Vex radios. Yeah. So yeah, Dave was really was really generous. We worked out a good price for everything, and then he just kind of kept throwing stuff in that he was cleaning out, which was which was very welcome uh, and very cool. So now we're driving uh, in the rain between Lebanon and our next stop on the west side of Pennsylvania, and uh, should be there around 4:30 and grab some more boats. Like we're, we're climbing up the mountain. I think we're actually. I think we're actually up in the clouds. That's not fog. So this plate. We just finished talking to, to Timothy, and we got more boat in the back, including the surface runner, which is kind of cool. We got a good deal on it, and that big Type Seven back there. Yeah, not uh, not what I was expecting, but still super cool. Tim Timothy's a cool guy, and uh, we promised that the legacy that his dad had in, in building these boats would get passed on to someone else. So that's it. Work's done. Now we just need to make it home. So off to the hotel, find some dinner, and the long stretch begins. Hello, everyone. It's Thursday the 7th, next day of our nice long journey. We're about three and a half hours in, out of uh, 10 hours today. But I'd say that's pretty good, considering we were expecting 11 and a half hours of driving. So. Yeah, like mis miscalculated apparently. So it's like, we got an extra hour, that's awesome. Yeah, it gives us a chance to relax in the hotel a little bit longer, and then tomorrow is the last long leg and finally get home. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna over, we overnighted in West Virginia, and we're gonna be, going tonight to Jackson, Tennessee, and then from there it's going to be a straight shot back. So it's 9 o'clock in the morning now. We left at, it was like 5.30 this morning. I think I was pretty crocky at mid late. Yeah, yeah, about 5.30, and uh, we got six and a half hours left of uh, driving today. So I think we, we just entered Kentucky, yeah, about half an hour ago. Yeah, about half an hour ago. Yeah, so making good time. The weather's actually getting better. It's clearing up a little, and there's no nobody on this road. No, nope. on the road. All right, so change in plans. Um, originally, we were going to overnight in Jackson, Tennessee, but we're already past Jackson, Tennessee, and uh, the weather is gorgeous. It's uh, about 70 degrees and kind of quasi sunny outside. So what we've decided to do is uh, push on um, 11 hours from now. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. If we plow through at this rate, limit our bathroom breaks, we should get home about 1230 in the morning tonight or tomorrow I guess it would be so it's kind of uh, attractive to us to do that it's gonna be a push and it sucks because it's gonna be about six hours of driving in the dark um, but I think we can do it there's two of us we can spell each other off and uh, 
I think it'll make it a lot better. They give me all day tomorrow to unload. We get to go through all of the uh, boats, get them unloaded, return the rental car a day early. We'll save all that. We save on the hotel room and meals. So that is the plan. So it is uh, 20 after nine central time. And uh, we got three hours left. We're, we've been in Texas for three hours. <laughs> three hours already. We're halfway through the quarter way point to Texas. Yeah, but uh, it's beautiful, clear, 70 degrees outside, not much traffic. So, uh, trip's going good. Energy drinks are keeping us fueled. We should have enough fuel to get us all the way back, but uh, I think we need a bladder break here. And, another half an hour or so and then it'll be straight shot home well we made it we are home it's uh friday morning 8 20 a.m and uh logan and i were really glad that we pushed through we got back at about 12 30 a.m last night uh, or this morning um and uh now i've managed to on offload the truck and uh, I'm anxious to share with you everything I got. I wanna give you an overview of everything that uh, I picked up. Some things will be coming available for sale. Some things are gonna end up in Subfest for donations, for raffles, and uh, some are upcoming projects uh, that I'm really excited about. But before we do that, let's take a look at uh, the driving summary from the vehicle here. All right, our trusty steed, good old minivan. Uh, power everything on here. And let's take a look at our 1,855.9 miles, 29 hours of driving. That was an epic road trip. So for now, and because I've literally got no room here at the house other than in here, uh, on the floor, we got everything we picked up. Let's take a closer look. So first and foremost, uh, you can see this gigantic Akula. And I don't know if the video is properly portraying its length, but it is eight feet long. Uh, 148 scale Akula. This was built by uh, Dwayne Hill up in Canada. And uh, it's uh, already sold. So if you're after an eight foot Akula, unfortunately, you're out of luck. This will be going to uh, Florida along with that giant Seahound and the 80 inch Sea View. But um, we will be testing this, going through it, making sure that it's fully set up, trimmed, ready to go. Um, got some really cool things here. I, I furnished this for Dwayne. This is a nylon printed propeller. This is about five inches in diameter. It's huge. Dwayne's got some rudder extensions on there to help with the turning radius because as you can imagine this thing probably needs about an acre to get turned around um i picked up this little 3.5 d &E watertight cylinder old school gas ballast um the forward bulkhead there's chipped uh, and it needs the motors installed but uh, basically brand new other than that um an angle gato class and uh, it's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, I think actually if it were to get cleaned up and throw a new paint job on it, it would look really good. You know, get the um, the, the, the uh, guns, you know, on there and clean it up. And with it came this really cool custom R&R &R watertight cylinder, dual ballast, forward and aft. It's a pump style ballast system. It's gonna have lots of reserve buoyancy. That's a big center section right there. But uh, in theory, uh, David, the gentleman I picked it up from, said that this was sized specifically for this boat based on the weight of the upper hull. So that uh, should be coming available here fairly soon. That cylinder is brand new, by the way. Um, if you guys are familiar with David Hughes' Zero Bubble, this is his uh, Delta kit. Uh, unless someone really wants it, um, it's going to be a donation. For the raffle at Subfest. So you could win this for free if you join us in uh, Cajada, Georgia, coming up in September. Um, I don't know if you guys can get this, but that 
is a 30 inch long Proteus from Fantastic Voyage. It was a, a kit that Rick Teske put out um, years and years ago. Uh, I think I was talking to Ed and he figures this is probably, you know, circa, you know, like 2000 or something like that. It's like a 30 year old kit or before, even, even earlier than that, who knows. But uh, that was actually donated to Logan. Uh, by Frank. So we got the upper and lower fiberglass hulls and then all the resin detail pieces in there. Uh, this was something that was kind of thrown in when I picked up the Type 7. This is a surface craft and uh, you can see it's the USS Crockett. Um, supposed to be in fully operational condition. The guns are all supposed to swivel, lights and everything. It's really well put together. Um, I think we'll just we'll just power it on. We'll see if it works. You know, obviously old school electronics and stuff, but it wouldn't be hard to um, update this at all if you needed to. Maybe it'll just run it like it is. Old solid state electronics run forever, right? In the back there is a big thirty second scale fiberglass hull of a German Type Seven. Um, you know, all the linkages and everything are run. It's, it's actually in better shape than it probably looks in the video. Uh, comes with that fiberglass deck that you can see there. And an accurate armor tower. Now, I don't know if I'm going to list this for sale or if this is going to end up in the raffle at Subfest. We'll see how that goes. Uh, in front of it is this uh, big 30-second Type 7, another one. Um, fiberglass hull, but it's all... Uh, dry hull inside. Same builder that did the Crockett there. Um, but again, supposed to be fully functional when it was mothballed. Uh, the, the level of detail uh, and uh, you know, care and attention that the builder did for this is really astounding. It's really well put together. Lots of really neat details in here. And uh, comes with a radio, an old Ace Nautical Commander radio. So uh, we'll, we'll tear into that too. We'll take a look and, and see how it uh, looks. You know, man, with a new paint job, that thing would look like a million bucks. It's really cool. Um, also got this um, Shearline slash Bex model Marine uh, Vanguard. So that's just a brand new kit. Comes with all the resin pieces, the impeller, all of that stuff is in there. Uh, and then in front of that is a, a big, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess maybe it's 48 scale. Um, could be a little bigger than that, actually. I don't know. I'd have to measure it out. Um, came from Germany, a former dry hull boat, but it would take virtually nothing to uh, just knock out the bulkheads inside and throw a cylinder in it. Um, it's all rigged up for attracting bow planes. Uh, the nose apparently was damaged in shipping, but Dave uh, David did up a replacement piece, so it just literally glued on, and that's all repaired and ready to go uh, again just a little bit of elbow grease and that thing I think would uh, turn into a really really cool boat um, also I was donated this for my birthday from a good friend up in New York uh, brand new dual shaft MSD sub driver that'd be perfect for like a Gato or a Revell type 9 that kind of thing I don't know if I'll hold on to it for a future project or if I'll list it for sale but obviously you guys will be the first to know. And the last in the garage here is this really, really cool Marlin. Now, I'm not honestly a fan of the 30-second parallel type kits because, um, you know, they're, they're styrene plastic. But whoever did this, and this was apparently a German uh, gentleman, did such an amazing job super detailing this boat. Just a really amazing attention to detail here. And uh, what's really cool is this cylinder is a really neat uh, idea. This is a, a custom watertight cylinder with an angle piston tank uh, for uh, ballast. And it's custom designed for this boat. So I'm gonna uh, tear into that. I think that would be a really quick turnaround. And because that Marlin is such a nice size, it might be a shop boat. You know, it's the kind of thing I can just chuck in the back of the plane or the back of the car and uh, run it out for events and that kind of thing. 
So hopefully, maybe we'll get this ready, you know, in time for Groton, so we can fly up there and have a boat to run up there in Connecticut coming up in early September. And last but not least, I need to share with you the real reason that we initially planned the trip up there to New York. Uh, it's something, now that I've seen it in person, I'm even more excited about. This is an eight and a half foot long sea view from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Um, this was custom built. It's kind of a one-off uh, deal. It's, it's not a kit. Not yet anyway. All fiberglass, just a beautiful job. Now this, the, it was originally mastered by Ray Mason and uh, obviously did a stupendous job, but it was Frank Salerno who kind of took it to the next level, uh, accurized it, lengthened it, did a whole bunch of work with the molds, um, did all of these absolutely gorgeous um, detail pieces, all the missile hatches, the access hatches. He uh, pre-did all of the clear parts and then these gorgeous little, um, you know, man hatches for the sail there. Um, just a beautiful piece of work. And I really can't, you know, impart to you just how huge this thing is. Um, you know, I'd say this, this wingspan here is probably like 16 or, or 18 inches. Like I can put my hand fully inside these nasals. Um, this would make a really cool dis um, RC model if you had a crane to launch and retrieve it. Um, but this one is actually destined to be a uh, display model. So Logan and I are going to be rigging it up with full uh, LED lighting. You can see that Frank pre-ran some wires in the back there. We'll get some navigation lights up in the sail. And uh, of course, a fully detailed control bridge in the front there. Um, you know, LED lights in the, in the front and underneath. Uh, we've got the shuttle bay or this flying sub bay door right here so that's going to be a really fun project and it should be a quick turnaround we're actually hoping to flip this you know within a, a week or two uh, because we need to get that off to uh, the owner who commissioned it from us uh, over in tennessee it's going to be in a classic car museum of all things hanging from the uh, ceiling so uh, yeah, eight and a half feet long. I believe that works out to roughly 148 scale. So there you go, guys. It's the end of the epic Nautilus Dry Docks uh, road trip. And uh, hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. It helps us out here a lot. Uh, if you have questions or comments, drop them below. We'll get to them as soon as I can. You can always email me, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. Uh, with that, maybe I'll leave you with a couple of videos. Let's take a look at uh, our 80-inch DeBoer Sea View right over here. And we'll take a look at uh, a, a Kula build that I did in 96 scale. That was really cool as well. With that, I'm going to let you go. This is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy. You have a great day, and we'll catch you next time.